you want people to like love what you've created and love you. But you know, I remember I got up and you know I get this this long standing ovation. Yeah. And you know after the movie and I remember standing there th thinking, I feel I don't feel a thing. Welcome to my uh, Misty Studio. It's very nice. It's very warm in here. It is warm in here. Mm -hmm. Do you know why? Air conditioning. Air conditioning's broken. Yes. So you're going to see me schwitzing. I believe that's I, the I Yiddish be term. I as well. It's okay. Let's just do it. Let's be in it. We're missionary. I'm a missionary. I'm not. Yes, you are. <laughs> I'm a digital missionary. You're a digitionary. That doesn't, that doesn't work. <laughs> Let's erase that from the thing. Uh, What's up, Darren? How you doing, buddy? Uh... I'm doing really good. Uh, I'm a little upset at you. Okay. <laughs> this is a confrontation. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. I've been planning this all along. <laughs> you live two miles from me. I do live two miles from you. And uh, I haven't seen you. For the last eight months, I've lived two miles from you. God. I didn't even know that. Well, I knew that. Yeah. And uh, honestly, I am equally at fault because I've been way too busy. Yeah. Well, I'm just way too much of a hobbit. So. I don't like that term for you, number one. Why? I think it, it, it's a play on your size, shortness, which you're not short. You're not Hobbit-esque. I'm pretty Hobbit-esque. Are you trying to say that you're an introvert? No, my personality. You're introvert. Look at it. I always describe it like this. I, I always say I'm a Hobbit because I love my Hobbit hole. I just love being home. I don't like that term. But, but, Keep the, going. but every once in a while, mm -hmm. Gandalf shows up at my door <laughs> and asks me to go on an adventure. That's true. And so that's that's basically been my life for 15 years. And that's why I use the term hobbit. Yes. Okay. Yes. I actually... Because hobbits it. don't like to, like, go on adventures. They don't like to... Bro. They don't like to do things that are uncomfortable. You were an English major? Yeah. Yeah, that's why. Uh, what's <laughs> the last book you've read? Uh, actually, what was the last book? Oh, gosh, I'm reading, like, four. In the, four. Um, I just... What did I just finish? Shoot. I can tell you're really into it. Um... Actually, I'm reading one right now that okay. I'm super into. What is it? It's all about um, the Mormon migration using hand, like hand carts that turned into like a massive disaster. I love history. You do? Yeah, that's like almost all I read is history. Are stuff. you, what is it, Dave Karn? Uh, history. He does like one podcast a year or two a year okay. where he studies something for like six, eight months. Nine oh, really? Months, that sounds And then cool. he does one like 15 hour. Oh, I should check that out. The Wrath of Khan. Huh. I think it's Dave Khan. What, what is it? Do you guys know what it is? Matt, I feel like you would know. Never mind. No, nobody's listening to me. <laughs> I was trying to act like I was stu studious. Yeah. Like I was studious. <laughs> but I'm not. Uh, I did listen to that, though. It was very That's crazy. Cool. I'll have to uh, check that out. Yeah. Genghis Khan was insane. Yeah. he Didn't he, like... Sire like ten percent of the world or something like that. At I this point? think the I think the statistic is and don't quote me on this. Uh, you do your own research. I think it was like twenty five percent of all people in China or maybe in that area have That's like crazy. some DNA that can be traced back to him or some like large percent. That's crazy. It's and crazy, no, and nobody knows where he's buried because he killed everybody who buried him. Right? Yeah, he came from nothing, like literally nothing. That's so weird. he was like the poorest of the poor, really, and rose to be probably the most destructive leader that the world has ever seen. Hmm. I have to listen to that. Insanity. I'll listen to that podcast. That sounds interesting. Yeah, it's a good one. Anyway. Uh, Darren. Yes. Finger of God, Furious Love, Father Lights, Holy Ghost, Holy Ghost, one, two, three, four. Or two, three. Two, three. Three now. Three now. Yeah. Uh, let me just say, let me just introduce you. Darren's a good friend. We've known each other for... Since 2010? We've been all over the yeah. world together. Well. And... Uh, Man, it's really a joy to have you here. And we love, could be two sweaty it. bodies. I'm already sweating. It's know, dripping down my sides. Me too. It's just people are going to have to get used to the glisten. <laughs> We've sweat in a lot of places in the world we have. together. Yes, we have. We have shared gold blonde powder <laughs> stories together. <laughs> yep. yep. It's a secret behind the scenes. Uh, we've gone to a lot of places, man. Yep. And I, I love my relationship with you. We can be separate for a year or two and come back mm -hmm. together. And it's just like picking up where we left off. Absolutely. Um, I don't want to interview you and tell the story that everybody knows, yeah. right? Because people know a lot about you. You've done a lot of interviews. You've yeah. done a lot of stuff. You put your life, uh, really your life's journey with the Lord out there. Mm -hmm. So I want, I want to leave this interview with some tasty nuggets about Darren Wilson. Oh, boy. Number one, we let people know that you were an 
English professor <laughs> for yep. years. 13 years. D- but like, h- how old are you? I am 40, almost 47, 46. Okay. So I'm 42. How long were you a professor for? Uh, 13 years. I've, I started when I was 23. Yes. I'm trying to do the math. Yeah. What gets a 18 year old out of high school to go, I want to be a nerd for life? <laughs> Well, okay. First of all, you have to remember, my dad was a college professor as well. Arts. Art, yeah, he's yeah. An, art, an art professor. Incredible artist. Um, and so, like, that's the lifestyle I grew up with. I grew up, like, the thought of having a job where you only get two weeks vacation was, mm-hmm. like, completely, like, insane to me. I'm like, because my dad was always around all summer long. And so, like, teaching was always something that was kind of you know, interested in because I'm, you know, I was a smart kid. Mm -hmm. But uh, so then I went to grad school. Basically, when I graduated high school, I was just trying and graduate college, I was just trying to avoid a job as as long as I could possibly do it. So I went to uh, I went to graduate school at Regent University, got my MFA in uh, screenwriting, writing movies. Um, And so but once you have that, so you can't really you have to have what's called a terminal degree to become a college professor. What's a terminal degree? That's like at the end, you can't go any further. So like PhD, um, I like for the arts uh, the MFA is the okay. PhD equivalent. Master of Fine Arts. Master of Fine Arts, yeah. So once I got that, I was basically you know I was kind of the star student with my English professors because yeah. I was I just wor- outworked everybody because I really loved it. I really loved to write. Yeah. And uh, and so basically they had. I remember I called up my old English professor in Chicago and I was like, hey, like I I just graduated. Like, do you guys have any like adjunct openings and like yeah. They, they, and like, she's like, I can't believe you're calling me a week ago. We just lost our, our major adjuncts and like we school starts in a week. Can you do it? And so I basically was a full time professor making adjunct money. So like, I think our first year, like my first year of marriage, I think I made like $17,000 for the year. It was like as a professor, as a professor. Yeah, it was bad. Okay. So then I was also teaching, I was doubling up. I was teaching at the community college as well. Okay. And so, yeah, it's just for, for a while. I just, and everybody thought it was going to be a joke that I was going to be a professor because it's like, I couldn't speak in public. Yeah. I couldn't tell a joke. Like I just mess everything up. But as soon as I started the first day of class, it was like a fish in water. And I, I just, I loved it. And I was good at it, you yeah. know, as, and I just, for me as a, as a teacher, that's what, you know, I see like, you know, for instance, like my son is struggling in school right now. We were talking mm-hmm. about this before. Yeah, we were. And, you know, I see like these, these teachers, it's like, they don't care if a student doesn't care. And I couldn't handle that. I was teaching eight o'clock in the morning, English one-on-one classes. And like, I was, and my students loved coming to eight o'clock classes because like, I, I like, you don't want to be a writer. That's fine, but we're going to have fun. Yeah. You know, and I'm, and so, yeah, so I just really like became good at it. And, um, just, they just kept giving me a new contract every year. And until finally they were like, all right, we'll we'll bring you on board. Was it weird teaching people like similar in age to you? Yeah. It was very strange in the beginning. Yeah. Did anybody ever try to. Now community college was even worse because I'm (laughs) teaching like 50 year olds. Did anybody ever try to bribe you? No. Did anybody ever try to like trade tit for tat, listen, I'll do this, I'll scratch your back, you scratch mine. No, because I was, I was actually kind of a, like, I was kind of, like, a hard butt teacher. Like, I was fun, but, like, I don't accept any late work. Yeah. Like, you're an adult, dude, just just get it in on time. You know what I mean? Just be adulting. Yeah, it's like, welcome to the real world. That's kind of how I was. So they just kind of knew not to, not to mess. But I also made stuff fun. Like, I give fun assignments. I love that. Yeah. Okay, favorite authors. It doesn't have to be a uh, Christian. Um, let's see here. Okay. This is going to get me in trouble. Don't. Well, uh, you do whatever you want. I, I love Favorite like, authors. I, I've, uh, I love tons of. Like I love Dan Brown. I don't know who that is. Da Vinci Code. No. Okay. Why? I, I've seen the movie. Tom Hanks. No, his, all of his books, they're so good. Really? Yeah. They're just these like fast paced thrillers. Every chapter ends with a cliffhanger like he's going in you're learning about history and all this other stuff now some of the stuff about christianity is all yeah, wacky it's but garbage no but he's he's one of my favorites i'm trying to think of like some of the ones that um c.s lewis actually Nay. i mean back in the day i haven't read okay. c.s lewis in years okay um i just kind of bop all over the place okay. honestly i read mostly history so it's like whatever all my stuff is like i like the like ad- adventure history like okay. like the the Arctic stuff, you know, these guys getting stuck up there, the shackles, really, like all that kind of. Oh, I can't get enough of it. Why? 
I don't know. Maybe it's, maybe it's partly because I love to travel. Mm -hmm. But it's just the... I don't know, like, and it's pro probably a little bit of my hobbitness, like, being projected, you yeah. know, kind of like, I like to see other people, like, the struggle for life, the struggle of all this kind of stuff, you right. know, but I, but from the comfort of my armchair. Right. Kind of I love that. <laughs> okay. Um, so, speaking of going on Adventures with God, you had a TV show. Yeah. Adventures with God. Um, you've done seven movies now? I think Forgive so. me. I, think I don't so. know, something like that. Finger Furious, Father of Lights, Holy Ghost, Holy Ghost 2, God Man. Yep. Se Holy seven. Ghost 3, yeah. Seven. God, I did my research. <laughs> uh, I didn't actually. But I've watched them all. Um, if, if you could cut one out of your resume. What a horrible question. It's an excellent question. Like, if you asked me that about my children, I would tell you which one. No, I'm joking. <laughs> I'm joking. Uh, like, what, is there Boy. one? If, or if you could redo it. Let me, let me, let me oh, phrase okay. it. Oh, okay. Well, if easy. you could completely redo one. That's the easiest question in the world. Well, then go to the horrible question then. Which one would you get rid of? Probably Finger of God. Really? It's, as, a, as an, okay, you have to hear me. Okay. I'm listening. My That's heart. what I'm here to do. So, like, anytime somebody's, they come to me and they're like, where should I start with your films? I will never tell them Finger of God. Why? It's the quintessential, it's the open door to everything. I know. I know. I know that. But as an artist, it's very, it's a very embarrassing film. Kind of like when your phone goes off in an interview. That's not embarrassing. It's normal. <laughs> No, I mean, dude, this, it looks horrible. I didn't know what I was doing. It looks horrible. It sounds horrible. Like, it's not on par with the level of, like, of how, like, I want to, like, entertain you as well as, like, give you, like, a Holy Spirit, like, beat down. Right, but isn't that one of the things that really drew people to it? It was, yeah, like, no, no one had done 100%. it. It was raw. It was, like, oh, my God. This, this guy's, guy's not just making this beepity up. booping, like, right, around. right. But that's what I mean. So, yeah, I mean, but you're asking me to, which okay. one, like, I would say that one simply because the quality is so bad, in my opinion. Okay. So, like, and of course, if I could redo it, I would redo it in two seconds. Yeah. But, um, no, but it's, it's also, like, I also realize it's, like, the most important film. Yeah. Because it started everything. Yep. And it changed a lot of lives, and it changed a lot of things. You know what I mean? So I'm very grateful for it. Don't don't hear me saying I'm I hear not you. grateful. It's just yeah, I've just I've grown so much that it's like people say when they're like people all the time and like the only movie of mine that they've ever seen is Finger of God. Right. And I'm like, oh man, like just can you please watch like Father of Lights or something? Like just watch one more because I'm a lot better than that. Yeah. <laughs> you know, so that's kind of it's a long winded answer to your question. Yeah, but. it's funny because so artistically you like the other ones. Oh yeah. But narrative wise it was the narrative and the storyline of the first one that opened up all the doors. Yeah, and so do you, did I ever tell you about how I even put that together? Do you know the story? I feel like I've heard it, but go for it. Tell so me. yeah, so I, I mean, you know, I remember I finished, um, finished filming. Uh, we were actually finished with Heidi in, uh, mm -hmm. in uh, Turkey. And I had about 100 hours of footage. And this is back in like, this wasn't digital, it was all on tape. And so I knew I had to go put this thing together, but I'm like, I had just... It's filmed so many random things and so many random people, and I had no idea what the story was going to be. I didn't think I had anything. And I right. started to have, I remember I was on the bus. We were going to, like, the final, like, meal for Iris or whatever. And uh, I started having a nervous breakdown, like, on the bus. I was, like, starting to hyperventilate because I'm, like, I'm going home tomorrow, and I don't know what to do. I've just wasted a year of my life and all this money that my grandma gave me to make this movie. And I was just, I was kind of freaking out. And uh, I remember, but I, you know, what was interesting, I think right before that, Shara, uh, Heidi's yeah. old assistant, she actually prophesied over me and said, when it comes time to edit this movie, the Lord is going to take you into his womb and feed you intravenously. What does that even mean? Well, I, it, he was going to help me. Was, okay. you know? And so I basically, I got home and... Um, you know, I remember before that, though, Heidi prayed, like, the most one of the most powerful prayers ever over me. Yeah. And um, so I remember I got home, and I sat down, and I had to, I, you know, I was learning how to edit as well. I'm mean, doing this in my living room. And I remember I sat there, and I didn't even know how to start. I have no clue what to do. And so I just I remember I remembered Shara's prayer. And so I yeah. prayed. I was like, God, you said that you're going to you're gonna do this for me. You're going to feed me. But So I'm like, I don't have any, I don't even have an idea. So I'm just going to sit here. 
and wait until you tell me what to do. Yeah. And I'm, this is a guy who's still learning how to even hear mm -hmm. God, right? Yeah. I require, I like every decision, prophetic decision I made for that film and a lot of Furious Love was because other prophetic voices were telling me what to do because mm -hmm. I couldn't hear for myself. <clears throat> and so uh, I sat there and I think it was about 10 minutes. And now, like, when you're just sitting trying to hear from God and you don't even know, like, what God sounds like, yeah. 10 minutes is a long time. Yeah. But I'm like, I got nothing else to do, and I don't have any ideas. And so I, just, I remember I sat there, and then all of a sudden, this, this little thought um, came in, and I didn't know if it was me or if it was God, but it felt like it was not me. Mm -hmm. And he said, um, make them laugh. And I knew immediately what he meant. And so I started out, that's how the movie starts with my aunt and uncle <laughs> who have gold teeth. Yeah. Right. And so it said, you know, I'm basically like, you know, this is Aunt Patsy and Uncle Bob, yeah. you know, and then, you know, Aunt Patsy says, you know, yeah, like we went to church and uh, God gave us gold teeth. And I pause it and I said, hold on. Yeah. And yeah. Go back up. And every time people watch it, you, it's not a, it's not a guffaw. It's mm -hmm. a chuckle. Yeah. But it makes you laugh. And it kind of like, and it set the tone of like, okay, this guy isn't like this isn't going to be a normal christian movie i don't you know because it's like this it actually has some hu some humor in it. it it was humorous but you're also you're also actually making it real mm -hmm. right like oh this is my aunt and uncle yeah like shooting in my backyard yes. yeah <laughs> and i think that i think that was one of the things that made it so endearing hmm. right and and, and the, all of the films right but especially the first one that's why i was a little shocked when you were like <laughs> finger of god because well, the only way I can go with this is artistically, and, and that's why I, you know, I get it. Because spiritually, like they're all just to my in my opinion, they're all powerhouses. So it's like I don't want to take anything away, but like right. the only thing I can hang I can hang on to is like the artistic quality. But that moment, it actually does personalize the whole thing because yeah. everybody has an aunt and uncle, right? Right? That like are like Bleh. you know they <laughs> they give me socks at Christmas, right? And and I think I think it it it, it brought people into the story. Of the supernatural, which happens to so many people, maybe mm -hmm. not with gold teeth, but like a healing or yep. they experience God move powerfully in some way in their life and they think they're going crazy. Mm -hmm. Right. Me, yeah. Yeah. And so, yeah, you had gold teeth. I know it's not the most common thing in the world, but a lot of people have had those moments. Yeah. And I think just to personalize it with like, oh, this is my aunt and uncle. I think it, it really opens people up mm. uh, because God moves, you know, he yeah. moves constantly. And a lot of that, when you get to something on the screen or a teacher and the preacher, there's all, automatically a wall that goes up right. to like pretend this isn't real. So I just, I really, I love it. It's one of my favorite parts in the film. That's awesome. Yeah, so what happened then? So then that became the template. So every day I'd come down and, and I'd sit there and I'd pray and I was like, tell me what to do. Because yeah. I, I didn't know what was coming next. I didn't, I mean, I, my, my, my degree was in, is actually in like structure. I really get like story structure. Mm. Um, but at this one, I just had nothing. Cause I'm like, I just, it's all random. Mm. And so every day though, God would just say, okay, today we're going to do this. And he'd give me a little vision or a little like picture of something and remind me of something that I filmed. And so then I, I would just do that. And like when I finished that edit, I would just stop. Cause I'm like, there's, I don't know what else to do. I'll right. pick it up tomorrow. And so if you actually go back and watch that movie, it's literally just a bunch of short little like dink, 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 dink. Because yeah. it's like that's how I'm editing it. Like God just telling me what to do. Like telling me like, okay, do this, this, and this, and this, and this. Wow. The only thing that I knew go beforehand was the ending. Um, I knew that because the Lord told me while I was filming. Um, it was with Jason Westerfield and, and I and if the, with the homeless guy at the end yeah. of the movie. And while we were filming that, it was m like midnight in like outside of Yale. And... Uh, met this guy and so I started filming him as he started to walk away and the Lord I, I heard him very clearly say you're filming the end of the movie and we're like halfway through and so um, that's why if you watch that shot I keep that shot super long yeah. and then I like I kind of like messed with the camera and took it like very slowly out of focus and that's how the movie ends because I knew I was filming the end so I wanted to have come like kind of like an artistic ending to mm. this so that was the only thing I knew. I only knew the end. And, and the Lord's done it every single movie. He's always shown me the end first. It's funny. The last film, the film that I just watched, it ends with the homeless man. Oh, that's true. That's right. Never mind. I'm sorry. I don't want to get ahead of myself. Yeah. Um, you um, have... It, okay, so if you, if you could go back and there was a section, one section you can remove from any of your films, 
what would the section mm. be and why? Goodness gracious. Um, and then I have one other question. Can then we'll give jump me these into questions it. ahead of time so I can. No, like no, no. I, listen, you don't have to answer it. It's not fun like watching people make. Th- no, it's me, fine. Watching me it's think. Fun. No, you think no, about I, it. There's I'm sure another I can, question. I'm sure I have. there is, but I'm just trying to. As you're thinking about it, there's another question that I have. You've met a lot of people in the spirit filled movement, mm-hmm. right? The charismatic Pentecostal spirit filled movement. Yeah. You've also, and you haven't just stayed there. You've gone out. You've theologians, and is there one person that? you've sat with that you're just like i love that person like that person Mm -hmm. gets it yeah who would that person be bill johnson (laughs) not even without even it's not a close there's not a close second Okay, what is it about about him when you filmed him like what is it tell me he is first of all for people who love bill and you know him i love bill johnson i i love that man yeah there's few humans walking the planet like Bill, but this yes. isn't my response. No, that's what I'm saying. Like, he's exactly who you hope he would be. Better. Yeah. It's like, I mean, everything he says is Jesus. It's like, it's just the, he is like, what, what, I, I could just speak superlatives, but what, what, what Hold on, when you say it, that's a big, that's a big statement. Everything he says is Jesus. Well, it's just, it feels like, okay, so like, I'll give you, I'll, I can only give you a for instance. Okay. So my last movie, The God Man. Yep. Um, my, you know, it's ultimately the story of my daughter's like coming back from, yeah. from being, awesome. from prodigal. And it really started when she met Bill. And she, it's even, it's in the movie. She's talking and she, she's like totally running from God. Mm-hmm. Like she's drug addict. You know, she's just like, and I just, I hired her to help me with the, the sound on the movie just to like, Hopefully she encounters Jesus a little bit. Like, yeah, we were in Brazil like, with her. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Um, and that's what really broke the dam for her. But but it started with her meeting Bill, and I asked Bill to to pray for her afterwards. And she just she said the whole time during the interview she was just crying, and she didn't understand why. Just everything Bill said, she's like it was just like Jesus was talking. And then when he went to pray for her, he, she, she's like I couldn't look him in the eye because I because like I was looking into the eyes of Jesus, and. She's like crying, and you can see her like not wanting to look yeah. at him. You know what I mean? Because it's like, and she's like, I felt so much shame, and like just of what I was doing, and conviction, conviction, yeah. And then, and when you're looking at Jesus, and he like he knows, he knows what I've been, what I've been doing, you know. And so, yeah. So I mean, there's just a lot of things. I'm just, I'm just really grateful for him. Um, I, I just I think was he's having a conversation with someone. I think it was yesterday about Bill. Uh, actually, today I had one, and yesterday about, and I, I'm sure he wouldn't. <coughs> Bill doesn't take accolades well. Mm-hmm. Um, actually, it's funny he, he <coughs> navigates it really beautifully. Yeah, I, I've learned so much from him. He's just he said at the end of the day, laying your crown down in front of the mm-hmm. king, and and he doesn't take accolades well. I've never met a man that is more intentional with his with his entire life, mm. like. Everything he does for, to me, it seems very purposeful, very thought mm-hmm. through. Like he, like when he speaks, you see that he chooses his words wisely, right? Right. Um, but but his actions in life are so intentional. It's like because yeah. I've got the chance to ask him a couple. You know, hey, why are you doing this? Why are you doing that? He's like, right. oh, because I want to see joy. I want to see mm. my wife receive joy. He said that to me once. Mm. What? <laughs> I was like, why are you doing this? He's like, I was like, you've been around. He's like, oh, I love watching my wife receive joy doing something. Mm. So I just want to watch that. I'm like, who wakes up and thinks that right. way? Like the everything, everything that I've seen is very, very intentional, yeah. very like purposeful. The way he raises his kids, the way he right. speaks, the way he he conducts himself. I, I just love that man. Yeah, he's the real deal. He is the real deal. I mean, I remember one of the things I filmed for him. I don't, I don't think I released it anywhere. I put it up on YouTube, I think. But he, uh, I asked him once. I think it was for the God man. Um, how do you deal with, like, you're the most, like, loathed person for people who hate the charismatic movement. Like, yeah. he's, like, number one, which I just do not understand. But um, I asked him, like, how do you deal with your with these people who hate you? And they, these, like, you, like, you have people who really hate you. And his answer, I'm like, I don't know anybody who would answer this. He's, yeah. like, he's basically, he's like, there are, he's like, there are five people that I've identified who were really yeah. very unkind. Yeah. And he's like, every time I do communion, I take communion, I pray for those five people. Mm-hmm. I pray for God to bless them, bless their ministries. And like, yeah. like, geez, Louise, like, 
I think I need to get saved again. You know, <laughs> it's it's true. It's <laughs> he's real. extraordinary. He's a, he's a great guy. He really is. So let's talk about people that loathe you for a second. You brought it up. <laughs> you got people that have come against your films. Yeah, I've had a few. What's that feel like? Uh, I mean, it's not fun. Um, but honestly, it, there came a breaking point. I think I'm trying to remember what it was. What movie it was for? Um, I think it, it must have been Holy Ghost because that's the one where they really brought out all the critters. And I remember somebody, these guys, they did like a three hours, actually longer than the movie, the three hour breakdown of every single scene in Holy Ghost and how it's all heretical and this isn't true and this is fake and this is blah, blah, blah. And Darren's the devil and this, and, you know, he's a wolf in sheep's, sheep's clothing, all this kind of stuff. Yeah. And, you know, I'm starting to see this stuff and I'm like, oh gosh, you know, and I just, and I'm, I start off with like, God, smite my enemies. You know what I mean? Like, because I'm thinking, like, it hurts. I'm thinking David. You know, he's like, take care of these, these guys yeah. off my back. You know what I mean? Um, but then I remember there was a moment I was actually taking a shower. God always gets me when I'm taking a shower. I think it's just because I'm naked. <laughs> let's go there. Don't think no, I'm don't, just kidding. Don't, let's, yeah, not. let's let's not uh, keep going. But and I remember um, he he just said, "What did I What did I tell you to do when you dealing with your enemies? Mm-hmm. Pray for them and bless them." Yeah. And so I did. I remember I was just there, and I was, it was very sincere. I was like, I, I really do forgive these people. Mm-hmm. Like, they don't know what they're doing. And, and that was it. That kind of broke everything. And, and you know, I kind of just, I kind of walk with under the, the umbrella of, like, I mean, it's really easy to be called a liar when you know you're telling the truth. So it's like, you can, t- so you can say I'm making this stuff up. You can say I'm staging it, whatever. I know I was there. I know the truth. Right. Whatever. You right. know what I mean? It's as, as long as... This group is being blessed by it. Like, that's all that matters. So do you ever listen and go, man, there, there's a good point there. Like, maybe theologically there's a good point. Or, man, maybe the way that we portrayed it, I would change that in the future. Yeah, sometimes. I mean, I remember we did one, one big change that happened with Holy Ghost was um, we actually invited a bunch of people who, who were cessationists um, in t- for a screening before we released it. I wanted to get their opinions. Talk about that. And so, yeah, because I'm like... We were going to a church in Chicago at the time that did not believe in the gifts of the Spirit. Yeah. I just I needed a break from the charismatic for a first season. And uh, so we were going to this church. Oh, and man, I want to talk about why, because people would think you live in that church. Oh, but anyway, yeah. keep going. Um, so, uh, yes, yeah, so we had all these people. About I think it was about 15, maybe 15 people. And they watched the movie, and they were, been, and they were very kind. They were very, like, like this is very powerful, blah, yeah. blah, blah. But they said, you know, you, I feel like you're, we got this a number of times. They're like you, you're, you're saying all this stuff, but there's no scripture to back it up because yeah. they're coming from a word based, yeah. hardcore. Yeah. And I knew as soon as I heard, it, I'm like, that's that's beautiful. That's perfect. That's a legit. That's perfect. Thing. And so that's so that became throughout the whole film. You know, we I would just sprinkle all these these Bible verses. Yeah. Throughout the film that kind of back up what you just saw. Mm-hmm. So that was one where it was like very very helpful to listen to them. I love that. Yeah. So you do listen. Occasionally. Constructive. Oh, hundred percent. Yeah. What, was there ever a piece that you got that was just hard where you look back now, you're like, why'd you put Will Hart on? He's the worst. And you're like, man, I look back now, and yes, I should have listened to that. That was a good... No, no, I don't have any of that because at the time, you have to understand, there's, there's a difference between like... I mean, so many people that I filmed have gone wonky, right? I want to talk about all of these <laughs> things so bad. So it's like... so, But, but I have to view it in the context of when we were filming Mm -hmm. and when we were filming, when I I was filming with everybody, as far as I could tell. Yeah. And I was convinced they were solid. Yeah. You know, um, I mean, Jason Westerfield is a perfect example. He was so solid in the beginning, you know, and just love Jesus. Everything was Jesus, 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 Jesus. Yeah. And, um, you know, and then he just made his decisions. And so, but like finger of God, fierce love, like he was, he was he was right there. I was you were there. there. You were in there. Salem. Yeah. Well, while they were filming that, I was standing off camera. Yeah. It was the time I was like, I was trying to see if you got like what y'all were up to, and I came. <laughs> Do you remember this? We had yeah, lobsters at my house. Yeah, I remember I had to beg you to come. And then we went out to Salem. I was not in a good place when we filmed <laughs> that. Like I was not. It was not a, like a happy season of my life. Yeah. Okay. Uh, that's what I mean. I was like fine, but I wasn't like thriving. Right. right. You know. Uh, and, but yeah, no, like we were out ministering in Salem for two days. 
Oh no, we only had uh, we only had one day there. No. Yeah, because that's what, that's what the pressure was on. Okay, we well, I think we we did some interviews right. on day one, and you're then right. like the actual like yep. the adventure p- portion. You're right. It was just that one. Because remember, we like every nothing was working. Oh man, and they just went and like prayed. Yeah, it's, and then we remember we went. We got uh, we got burgers for for dinner, and Matt, my brother in law, was like, "Dude, we're sneaking around here. Let's just like make a spectacle of ourselves." Yeah. And as soon as I heard that, because we had permission to film, we yep. could just set up the camera. And you know, I was just trying to be sneaky, you know, and it's not what God wanted to do at all. So as soon as he said that, I'm like, okay, well, I mean, let's do it. And, uh, you know, we had, it was 6 o'clock at night, stuff's closing pretty soon, so yeah. we had to just set everything up and set up a camera, and that's where just everything just went off because, you know, you guys were went out fishing for people. You and Matt were going out and getting, hey, you guys want to be in fun. a movie? And uh, people just lined up because, like, wait, I, I'm going to, you're going to, you're gonna give me a, a prophetic word, and it's free. I think we stood in it. front of the. We stood in front of the. Man, I, this is so many years it's ago. So long. We ago. stood in front of the psychic, and medium, like the entrance to the room where you'd go and. Yeah. Like this is in just give context. I'm sorry. I think the people of are in the world that maybe they haven't seen the movie. Yeah. Give context. We went and ministered in Salem, Massachusetts during the witchcraft fe- yes. festival. Yes. And took uh, took uh, Jason. Uh, down to minister. And yeah. I was off ministering just for fun. They were there to film with Jason. Yeah. And yeah, we went and stood in front of the entrance of the psychic and mediums booth and just prayed for people mm-hmm. as they were walking by. Saw God do a bunch of amazing yeah, things. Yeah, that was an interesting one. Because that's, that was a big lesson the Lord the Lord taught me was that shoot was uh, I went there I went there to pick a fight. Yeah. And I even told you, I think I told you guys, I'm like, we're going to pick a fight. Like, yeah. The, we're going to, like, I want light versus darkness. Yeah. I want fireworks. I want people manifesting demons. I want, like, yeah. this is a movie. You know, let's, like, let's just right. go into the heart of darkness and do it, you know. And when nothing was happening, and then I remember when, I remember the, when, the, when the, the witch guy, like, yeah. starts to get prayed for, and he takes yeah. off his, his, his uh, hood, like, in respect to God. I mean, that, that was a, another time where the Lord whispered to me, and he just said, he's like, I did not come to pick a fight. I came to love. <laughs> yeah. And I was like, oh. Just another notch in the belt of like, oh, this is who God actually is. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, he's not confrontational. He's very, he, he's just, he's, his, his love is confrontational. Right. But it's always through yeah. love as opposed to just like, I'm going to punch you in the face. Come on. Wake you up. You I know? love it. <laughs> we, I remember during that time, I got to pray for a guy. He had a, he was walking with a cane, like all decked out in garb because yeah. everybody's like, yeah, it's right. like uh, dress up and go and celebrate witchcraft. Yeah. And I prayed for him. He had a, his son, I think just got released from the hospital. Okay. Prayed for his stomach. His stomach got healed. The guy gave his life back to the Lord. He was a backslidden Christian. Mm. I love, I, I just, I've had honestly, like there's just as many cool testimonies and stories that happen off camera. Hmm. Uh, you only put in a one or two, but we, sometimes we're filming for days. Yeah, yeah. And there are things that happen. How do you pick what makes the cut and what doesn't? Because there are things that you've put in that I'm like, I don't know why he put that in from our time. Like, I would have yeah. picked this or this right. or this. Like, I think there was one in Utah, like the woman's ears started opening up and mm. she like ran away. And f- do you remember that? Was that by like a bus or something? Like, no, that was in the temple. It was the person giving us a tour were we filming though? Because I don't think we were allowed to film in there. I don't. I thought you guys had secret cameras running. I don't remember. There was a tour guide okay. outside of the Mormon because we wanted our goal was yeah. to get into to the, get in, yeah, to get into the the tabernacle or right. the temple, right? And so we're like out around. There's like a tour guide, and she's like walking around giving us this tour around the outside. Okay. And we're like, hey, can we pray for you? Do you remember this? I don't remember this. Oh at my all. gosh, I don't remember this at all. Okay. <laughs> No, but I remember we getting chased out. I mean, they're, yeah. they're constantly following us around, trying to get rid of us. Mm-hmm. But no, so to answer your question, um, it's actually pretty simple. Um, so I always go in. Now I kind of go in. I'm creating the story with the Lord while I'm filming. Okay. Because I've done this enough. Enough. I kind of know, like, I can just kind of like know how things are going to work. And so, um, so I, I. But I'm 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 constantly praying while we're filming. I'm taking notes every time that we film. And so I kind of, so, cause I need to remind myself of like what we filmed because these things take like a year to do. Yeah. And, um, and so I kind of have a sense of yeah. where I wanted to go, like at least the structure. Yeah. Uh, but what's actually gets included. Basically I find that I find all of that in the editing process. Yeah. So when I'm editing, I basically just, I try a lot of different things. 
until the thing that I try makes me cry. Okay. Until it makes me like it moves my spirit. Because I know if it moves my spirit, <laughs> like, and I w- was a part of it, and I know yeah. what's going to happen, yeah. I know it's going to move your spirit. Yeah. And it's also just that's just like I can just that's when the Holy Spirit comes on me. Like, and when the Holy Spirit comes on me, I cry. Mm-hmm. And so, like, I just know, like, okay, the Spirit's on this. It's definitely in the movie. Yeah. And I just kind of like, you know, as I'm putting it together, I'll do try stuff all the time where, you know, it's, there's a, there's a scene in, uh, in this, my new movie, Holy Ghost three, that was, I thought for sure it was going to be in the God. We haven't even stopped talking about Holy Ghost (laughs) three. I know, but I'm saying that's a perfect example of like where I went, I filmed Reinhard Bonnke's final crusade. It was incredible. And the freaking guy gets healed. Like it stands for the first time in his life. And I couldn't include it in the movie. Why? I was wondering, because you told me the story and I never saw it in the film. Yeah. And then I saw it last night as I was watching the. It's a screen. It's a screener. I got right. Or is yeah. it out yet? No, it's not out. It's no. It's, it's okay. coming out June fourteenth. Okay. Let me pause. Well, you just said the date. June fourteenth. Yes. What month is this? We're in uh, early early May. Okay. So I don't know when this is going to be shown. Hopefully, it'll be shown before June fourteenth. Yes. It will be shown before June fourteenth. You need to go and watch this film. There were stories that I've heard you share over the years. So this is actually like years of filming. Ten years. Ten years of filming. Some of the stories that I had heard about, because mm-hmm. like we all have the same friends, right? right. So like <laughs> after filming, I'd be like with Robbie, I'd be with Brian. Yeah. And they're like, oh, we saw this, we saw this, we saw this. So I actually, I didn't watch the trailer. Last night, I was like, oh, I got to film with Darren. I haven't watched his silly fo- film yet. I hit play. And... For an hour and 45 minutes, it was like I got to see all of the fun behind the scenes yeah. stories that were told about all these adventures with God that never made the final cut. Yeah. I enjoyed it so <laughs> stinking much, Darren. Oh, good. And I'm not, good. okay, everybody. I was who, nervous because when you texted, bro, I watched the movie last night. That's it. I was bro, like, okay, did you like it? Because <laughs> this one makes me nervous. Why? Because it's. But I have to tell you how. Okay, I'm nervous. I'm chair because I'm sweating like a pig, <laughs> like legit. It's a hundred degrees in this room right now. <laughs> it's it is seventy-eight or nine really degrees warm. right it's now, really and I'm warm. drinking hot coffee. But let's talk about Holy Ghost three. <laughs> okay, so um, I'm very confident because of where it came from, but I'm nervous because again, it's like it's not it's old footage, but it's but it's it's re it's like reimagined. And I love it. Robbie Dawkins said it's it's he thinks it's the best movie I've ever made. Well, yeah, I, mean, I wouldn't go that far. But I think it's because he's in it so much. Yes. <laughs> I love you, Robbie, by the way. <laughs> I just talked to him for like two hours a couple days ago. <laughs> so, <laughs> Rob, of course, it's the best one made. <laughs> Robbie. <laughs> uh, anyway, okay, so let me tell you where it came from. Because yeah. this was not Please, on my radar. give it to me. At all. Um, I was actually working on something completely different. Um, and it was in the beginning of, of, uh, of the year. And I had a dream. And I think, I don't know if I've told you about my God dreams. So I, every once in a while, I have God dreams. You tell me about them all the time. Okay. I love them. I, know, I don't know if you know, like, how I know that they're God dreams, though. No. So there's three parts. There's three components that makes them a God dream okay. that I know. One, um, there's always uh, two people mm-hmm. who I've, I'm pretty sure are my, my two angels. They're okay. always accompanying me, usually leading me or walking next to me. Um, I've never seen their face. They talk to me, but I've never seen them. Um, okay. There's um, everything is in exquisite detail. Um, <laughs> has a very like very different feel than a, like a normal dream. Uh, you know, it's like you're kind of here, then you're there, and it's like right. this is like I'm in it. Yeah. And then the last part is I never forget them ever. Yeah. Like I don't forget a second of them. Okay. So I had this happen in God Man, where the Lord told me to go to to hundred, gave me a dream. Um, you God, called me right after the dream. Did I about the 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 triplets? Yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, oh yeah, no, you were going, you were supposed to go on that trip. I was, weren't you? That's right. I was. Right, I, forgot I forget what happened. happened. I don't know. You just bailed. You're like, I, no, I didn't. I'm too sad. busy. Whatever. I'm too busy. I've gone on everything. You bailed on me. We were supposed to go to Israel together. When we got a, like a jet, somebody was going to do a jet. Well, no, the we were jet bailed on me. I didn't bail on you. You bailed on me. <laughs> okay. 
I've never forgotten it. I was going to go on a, pro, on, a, on a jet. I know. A little jet. I know. I was so excited. It's the same jet that anyway, we're supposed to go on. God, man. But anyway. Um, we love the jets. Yeah. So anyway, so I, th- those are the dreams I have, and I know they're from the Lord. Yeah. Like, he just makes it very, very, very clear. So uh, I think it was like January 4th, something like that. I had this I had this dream, totally not thinking about, I was thinking about something else. And uh, in it, uh, I was in a very, I was in the Arctic. Mm-hmm. And it's it just snow and ice everywhere. And there was a, a like a big pool of ice, of, of water that was cut out of the ice. And I was surrounded by every single person I've ever filmed. You all were there. Like, okay. I mean, probably 50 to 75 people. Like, every, they were all just standing around. And they were, and they were there. They were there to film me. And I was going to be jumping into this pool of water. Um, and now, so for me, water always represents um, the Holy Spirit. Like, always. It's, you know. And here I am surrounded by the Spirit, about to jump into the Holy Spirit. You know, it's like the Lord just said, he's like teeing up the ball. Right. And so right before I'm about to, I'm about to jump in, um, one of our mutual friends, Darren Davis, a pastor down in, in Florida, he breaks off from everybody and runs and leaps into the pool before me. And he swims around for a little bit, then he comes out. Um, so then I go up to the water and I check it out before I jump. And it's the, the, the top of the water is covered in hair clippings. I mean, it is like just nothing but hair on top of the water. And I kind of swish it around with my foot. And uh, so then I just take a running jump, and I, and I awkwardly jump into this pool of water thinking it's going to be like the most frozen ice bath ever. And I get it, as soon as I, I go in, it's like the most comfortable, just amazing. I'm Hairy like, oh, water. I love Let's go. This. I love this. <laughs> and I remember th- I was floating around in it, and I was like, I could just stay here forever. And then I woke up. And... So, I mean, the Lord showed me pretty, pretty quickly what it meant. You know, it was, you know, I'm, it's the Holy Spirit, it's the Holy Ghost, it's the, the Holy Ghost movies, whatever. Darren Davis has the exact same name as me, spells it the same as well. He's the one who jumps in first. Darren jumps into the pool for the old me, mm-hmm. another mm-hmm. me jumps in, swims around, and then he gets out and there's all these hair clippings. And so the hair clippings are all the stuff that w- was, was left on the cutting room floor. Stop. And so once he showed me that, I'm like, okay, I've got to make a movie that where I go back and, and find the stuff that either, you know, was just thrown, you know, in the deep recesses of a mm-hmm. deluxe edition or something that we filmed for the TV shows that not very many people saw, yeah. you know. And it's just, so I just kind of went through and, and started to identify what are the, what are the really powerful things that, that I just glossed over in the past and didn't wow. really, that couldn't fit in a story. And um, so, yeah, then it just became about, okay, Lord, like, how are we going to put this together? It came together really, really quickly. Yeah. Um, how, you know, the, the hard part was figuring out how to, like, tie them all together. Yeah. Because originally the first version of it was, um, I don't know if this is boring or whatever, but. Um, I'll tell you. The first, the I'll first, be like, boring. <laughs> the first version of the Moving movie was, was everything was, like, very intertwined. Mm-hmm. Even though they weren't like yeah. in reality, right? Yeah. Like when we film a normal movie, like everything is intertwined because yeah. we're on an adventure. Yep. I'm on an adventure trying to get to the bottom of something. These were all just separate and you know whatever. And so I remember I, I finished it, I showed it to my family. And they're always the ones who see it first because they're the most honest. And they're like, meh, you know this doesn't this doesn't yeah. really work. And I'm like, it has to, something. It has. To, I have to find a way to this to work because this is. God told me to do this. Yeah. So then I'm like, okay, let's just try a different approach. Let's just like have each story just be its own thing. Yeah. Just let it kind of breathe on its own. Right. Live on its own. And, and cut out like just the main. Because I was trying, I was trying to like just jam something in that, like trying to connect them in a way that it just wasn't organic. Yep. And so when I did this, it, it suddenly just felt right. And then when I, when, by the time I got to the end. The Lord, th- at that point, the Lord says, okay, these actually are all tied together. So there's a, you know, there's a, because it's, you're seeing how the Holy Spirit moves yeah. in all these different ways and situations. And at the end, it's, it's the same Holy Spirit. Yeah. And he's after the same thing in all of them. Yeah. You know what I mean? And so that was really what kind of the breakthrough for me was just letting them be what they were. Yeah. Because I was trying to get too cute. And like, it's just like, if they're God stories, man. Like, Dude, that, I loved it. I loved how they bounced around. Like, honestly, can I tell you one of my favorite parts? Which one? And it wasn't like, whoa, it's so powerful. It was you and the team of like backers. I loved it. There was oh. something about that. 
And it's probably just like the Randy Clark in me, like, come along with me on a trip. Right, and let's yeah. go. You know, like, I loved the purity. South Africa, I think. I, I loved yeah. that. There was something really beautiful about not having a minister yeah. out doing it. And equally as powerful. I loved it. Yeah. Another one that I'm just going to, like, one of the scenes that I love was at the concert. Oh, okay. I loved that. Yeah. I stinking loved that. <laughs> I did. Awesome. I really did. Um, I mean, I've been around Todd for years. Yeah. Love him. I was just out uh, sharing at his school. Love that guy. But to see, just to see, like, 10 years ago, how he hasn't changed. This is more for me. Yeah. Yeah, right, right, right. Like, there's no change in the guy. Right. Like, he just loves God, you know, preaches the gospel, you know, the guy repents, like, gives right. his yeah. life. Again, like re rededicates his life back to the Lord. Mm -hmm. Like I just love that. The the bonky one you chatted about. I my favorite. Loved. My favorite is the dogs. The one with the dogs just it destroys me. Eh. I think it's because I'm such a dog. Guy. That's it. I was like, well, could go without. Oh that. gosh, no. It actually was very very powerful. Yeah, you no, are a dog guy. Yeah, no, it's a. Uh, it's fun. I, I'm again. Yeah, you're just nervous because you never know. Like especially with stuff. I just don't want people to be disappointed. I've seen all this stuff before, whatever. I but loved it. Good. I really did, Darren. Thank you. And, like, I watched the whole thing. I was going to, like, skip through it. I didn't. Because <laughs> I, like, started at, like, 9 or 10 yeah, o'clock. Right, and yeah. I think I started at, like, 10 o'clock. I was like, I got to get up early. My whole plan was to skip through it. And I just ate up every moment That's of it. That's awesome. And Big Daddy Weave yeah, at the end. Yeah. The way you end. I won't say how you ended it. I thought it was really, really precious. Mm. I, I love the ending. I love I what do you know what I really loved? Mm. Ooh, I love how how <clears throat> the guy, I'll just try to be vague. Yeah. He was experiencing like I've tried to put myself in his shoes. Yeah. Right? Mm -hmm. Like these people come, they start blessing, they're all like, hey, we're Christians. Yeah. yeah. Love. <laughs> yeah, you're awesome. Like, you know, like everything's everything is awesome. And yeah. then all of a sudden it's like you have a choice. Right. Your life is up. Your to life change. can change if you let it. Mm -hmm. And I'm not even talking about salvation, mm -hmm. right? That the whole thing was to disciple. Like you're gonna, you're about. If you want it, you'll be discipled and taken care of. Yeah. And that tension of like these freaks have been like I've only known them for like two hours. <laughs> yeah. And I have this opportunity, yeah. and I'm it. And the way what I love the most was the way that you walked in at the end. And said, don't worry. Hmm. Like, it's okay. Hmm. This is a big decision. Yeah. And that, I think you phrase it this way, and I'm, or maybe the other guy did, the manager. He said, this isn't a decision. This is an opportunity. Yeah, it's an ultimatum. Yeah, it's not an ultimatum. It's an opportunity. Yes. That you can pick up any time. Yep. I, <laughs> I was like... <laughs> <laughs> because that I think that encompassed because because watching it I tried to watch it from the lens of I like strangers come up to me right and they're all fun and kind but then like whoa they're asking me to make a big decision things get real he's like oh, Michigan what's in Michigan you know like and I just love that I That's love awesome. watching you hmm. come in and de-escalate hmm. and be like don't worry yeah uh, I just loved it hmm. I I, I I had to take a minute. Oh, thanks, man. Well, I got to see the... I, what I love is I've witnessed... One of the things I love is I've witnessed you grow mm. as, a, as a father. Mm. I've witnessed you grow as a leader. I've witnessed you grow as a filmmaker. I've witnessed you grow as a scholar. I've witnessed you grow over the years. Mm. And all those years ago, you wouldn't have... I don't think you would have done that. Mm -mm. Probably not. I don't think you would have. Not that you, I don't think you, you had the experience to step in and do that. Right. But now, after all these years and dedicating your life to capturing these moments, being obedient to what the Lord says, and what most people don't know about you, which I know about you, is you are very personable. You are not overly religious. You are mm -hmm. not overly like, like, you are you. Yeah. And that's what's the beauty behind a lot of these films. It is just a journey. But to see your growth over the mm -hmm. years... I, I love that. Oh, thank you. I, I really do, Darren. Like, 
Well, you made a, you, you mentioned something. You said a lot of people have gone kooky. Yeah. You haven't. You're right. So why do you think others have? Especially ones that you've filmed. Uh, from what I've seen, it's usually because they reject any form of um, accountability. Let's talk about that. Um, I mean, I don't know. So the problem is a lot of these guys, the guys I really roll with, um, that you you roll with as well, and you know, like they're like the ones who are just the most solid, solid, solid. And I know they're not going to go, they're not going to go wonky. But I don't really know some of this. I don't like. I only know them from when I filmed them. Yeah. You know, um, and I don't know the circumstances all the way. All I know is from what I hear is like you know, it's usually a rejection of over oversight, a rejection of. You know your spiritual fathers or or mothers or whatever, and and you just you're gonna do it on your own, and that's never a good place to go. It's yeah. never a good place to be. Um, I think um, I was just talking to, to somebody the other day about like I I haven't looked at the stati- the statistics, but um, like the level of narcissism that's in like church leaders is like way higher than like almost any other. Really? Yeah. It's apparently it's, it's a thing. And you know, and that's what, you know, cause I mean, think about it. Like you go, a lot of these guys go into the ministry because like, right. I'm on stage, like I'm running this thing, you know, like everybody answers to me mm-hmm. and this and that. And then that just usually winds up, you know, you know, or, you know, I, that's why I've always been, you know, fearful. Um, of even just putting people in my movies, you know, hmm. the ones I love, usually the the people that you've recommended to me, are the ones who initially say no. Those are the ones I know they, they're going to be okay, you know, like uh, like um, the the couple that we filmed in Brazil. Uh, I mean, like they Marco didn't want somebody, yeah, Mark, they didn't want to be in it. They're, they had no. to really pray about it. Mike and Dina, Mike and Dina said no multiple times yeah. in uh, for Father of Lights and. And those are the ones you're like they they want nothing out of this. In fact, they actually like are afraid of what mm-hmm. the consequences are going to be yeah. of more eyeballs on them. And, you know, it's like yeah. they're just hidden yeah. and just doing kingdom work. Those are the best. Yeah. Like those, those are the ones like, I have to have you. Yeah. If you say no to me, I have to have you. <laughs> yeah. That's when I usually call you up and be like, talk to them. Oh, I, I remember <laughs> I tried to get you to film with Dan Moeller years mm-hmm. ago. And he said, no. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah. It doesn't happen often, but it, it definitely happens every once in a while. Yeah, and didn't do it for a bad reason. He was like, ah, it's just not my thing. Yeah. I just want to be hidden. Yeah. I love that. Which I'm fine, yeah. That's, I just that's awesome. love yeah. that. Yeah. Was, uh, I know I asked you who, like, one of your favorite was. You mentioned that. I don't want to highlight anybody who wasn't, right? Because people yeah, are on journeys, and some people, the reality is all of us have friends that have not run the fullest of the right. race. It's not over yet. Yeah. I will say that. But, um as you as you look back over the years, you know you have these people that maybe showed up in one or mm-hmm. one and a half. Or is there anyone that that you only put in one film that you wish you put in another one? As you look back, like <clears throat> I mean, hmm. Philip Mantofa, um, uh, gosh, uh, Mateus, yeah, Mateus. Um, um, like there are these people that along over the years you've put like different, you know, Champa, Champa, yeah, like, Champa um, uh, Thailand, we J- Dieselberg. Yeah. Any Dieselberg, um, I don't know. Like, I, I, is there probably, anyone? Probably Philip, just because he, he's like the Asian Bill Johnson. But like, yeah, he he is. I've never. I, I've very, met very few people like him. Oh yeah. Like he has. He has like. He knows who he is. He knows what it means to be a like, a son of the king. You know what I mean. And he's one I, yeah, I definitely wish I could have done. I wish I could have done some stuff with him, like, out in the streets. Yeah. That's what I, that's what I really, I would love to see him ministering to people. Dude, that's a great idea. You take pastors that have never done street ministry and bring them out in the streets and see what they're, because, like, so in, mis- in the missions, yeah. in Mozambique, no, I'm not pitching an idea to you, don't worry. In Mozambique, we would have, like, ministers that come over and we stick them in the bush of northern <laughs> Mozambique, like, Bugs coming at you. People are drunk, like mm-hmm. screaming, and putting people that are like used to just having people sit there and like clap and cheer and like mm-hmm. receive, putting them in front of a bunch of people that have never 
done that yeah. before. Like, oh, you got to see people. Like, they would preach and they'd talk about computers and stuff and an analogy. And they're like, what? <laughs> like, they, <laughs> they don't own a vehicle. They don't own a bicycle. Yeah, right. You're talking about computers, you know? Yeah. I, I love, I love that. And you get to see some of them. Some people, like, they rise. Mm -hmm. And some people are just like, I can't do this. I don't Somebody know. Yeah, else do right. this. Uh, you want to know one of my favorites was? Hmm. Because I watched a lot of them come over and do it. Like a lot of people. Mm -hmm. Todd White was one of the best. Hmm. I, and I wasn't expecting it. Hmm. I was not expecting him to connect. Hmm. Not that I was like... I, I, I remember like he's getting up to speak. We're at Bush Outreach. Right. I'm like, hey, Todd. Like, hey, just keep it simple, blah, blah, blah. Yeah. He's like, okay. He gets up, and within two minutes, like, everybody's listening. Oh. And I That's watched cool. him, like, completely, like, connect with the people group in a way that rarely do I see itinerants who, or speakers or pastors that come through. Like, he, he is, like, the pure evangelist. Yeah, right. Like, the right. purest right. of it. You put him in front of anyone. Yeah. And he'll just, he'll just meet them where they're at. Yeah. I'll tell you one that got away. Tell me. Um, I was, I, oh, I would love to have seen this. I just, oh, I still, it still hurts. So originally the, the God man, I tried to film, make the God man two times before I actually made it. Mm -hmm. Just stuff kept coming up and, yeah. you know. So originally I was going to go to the, to the four most extreme corners of the earth. Yeah. So extreme I north. Remember this you idea. remember this? Yeah. Yeah. And so the extreme north was, uh, it's the northernmost city in the world. Yeah. It's in like. Norway you or said something. Norway. Like, I was. Norway. I think I, I might have gone. It was in talks there, of me going on. That yeah. Way. So, but the other one who was going to go was Bill Johnson. Bill Johnson, and he agreed to it. You know, basically, it was like I had to like throw. I had to throw Benny in to mm -hmm. into, in in a promise of I think I believe a fishing trip. <laughs> um, but uh, he was up for it, and I oh I would so have loved to because he's in he's the only one him and I think Robbie are the only ones who've been in every single yeah. movie, and. Um, but I just would love to have seen him because every you know he's like the star interviewer interview e of most of my movies. But it's like I would love to have seen him like in an environment like that, just doing what he's you know he's taught so many people in the world you yeah. know how to do. So that's one I really wish I could because I just think that would have been fascinating yeah. to see. Come on. So anyway, that was that was the big fish that got away for that one. Well, Darren, uh, you got this new movie. Yes, it's Holy Ghost. Holy Ghost 3, Three. Testify. Is, did you seriously add that yeah. in? Yeah. Testify. Testify. That's the, that's the sub. That's it's like a Raging Against the Machine song. Is I it? only remember that from before I was saved. <laughs> <laughs> People get weird. Testify. <laughs> um, do you think that you'll continue to do some more of these? Uh, you have thousands of hours filmed. Um, I don't think. This is it. I think this is this is a one off. Yeah, you told me the last movie you did was the last one. And yeah, then, this, and this one's not even this one's very different from any of the other ones mm -hmm. because it's just it's not me going on another adventure. Yeah. It's just the only reason I did it is because the Lord told me to. Yeah, I wasn't going to do this. I mean, you know, it's, it's not a cash grab. It's not like any. Right. It's just like I mean, I don't even know if people are going to watch it, but yeah. I just the Lord gave me a dream, and told me what to do, so I went and did it. So, but yeah, the other like I I mean I poured through a lot of stuff. And, you know, these were the most, I think, moving, powerful, like, things that, that I really that I really connected with when I watched them again. Because I hadn't seen yeah. most of the stuff I hadn't seen in years. And I, I, some of the stuff I didn't remember that I shot, you know. And so it's like I'm watching it for the first time, and I'm just like, you know, like, for instance, like, the dog, the dog thing. Like, I forgot most of, I forgot even how those the two separate stories were actually related to each other. Yeah. Um, and so... Yeah, to me it was just it was just kind of like this is like kind of like what's the word that I'm looking for? Um it was just it was just the right thing at the right time right. in the right order. Right. Um and so no, I and that I don't I don't like looking back. I don't like, you know, digging into the past yeah. and stuff. I like to like I want to do new stuff. I wanna like push the envelope in different in different ways. So no, there won't be another one of these. Okay. So what's next for you? I don't know. You don't know? I don't know. I mean I think I I mean I think I know. There's some, there's, there's, uh, this is one I may not want to. Uh, Great. Don't worry about it. I, I know, but I don't want to say. Don't. So. Secrets. 
You're gonna have to find out when you come out. It's gonna be something. It's it's gonna yeah. Let me ask you a question. Do you want to get into film? More like films, like yeah. I'm gonna I I want to do it all. I want to do TV shows. I want to do like there's there's a okay. So there's a project that I'm working. It's a passion project that I'm that I'm actually what I was working on before Holy Ghost Three came. Yeah. But the problem is, it's a very it'll require a very large budget. It's like my first. It would be like my first like big movie. Okay. Um, and by by large budget, I mean. For me, a large budget. What's is, a large budget? For a you? large budget for me is like a couple of million dollars. Can I ask you some questions around budgets and yeah, movies? Yeah, How much did your first movie cost? I uh, made it for twenty thousand. Second movie, about two hundred. Third movie. Third movie on, they all range between three to four hundred thousand dollars to make. Whew. Yeah, that's a spicy meatball, my friend. What do you mean? Is that you think it's a lot? I don't know. That's I don't know not what a I'm lot doing. At all. That's not a lot at all. It's not. Not for like, like a movie. Yeah, you know, I mean most of, and most of that is you have to understand. I mean, with documentaries, it's different because it's like it's it's mostly travel. Like people I film with, I don't pay you guys. You know, I got to pay the crew, um, and then you know just whatever expenses you have you know along the way, and then but then it's the post is you know kind of a set budget. Yeah, post production, and uh, so it's kind of just it's really a lot of it is just travel and crew. I would like you to go into Iran, Afghanistan, Arabic nations, and film people's stories of Jesus appearing to them. I may be doing that in the near future. Are you serious? Yeah. I literally just like came up with that. Yeah. No, it's a. Uh, that's. Is it's, that a thing? It's one of the things that Shut is possibly up. on the table. I'll tell you about it afterwards. Are you serious? Yeah. I mean, it'll be a little different than what you said, but better. My, what I said is better than what you want to do, but you need to do that. Make that film. Okay. How can people watch your new film? Okay, here we go. So June, it's actually what we're doing is we're doing a pre-release. Are you serious? That's an idea? Yes. I'll tell you about it afterwards. You can't share any about it? Okay. How can we watch that film, Darren Wilson? (laughs) Not the one that I... How can we watch the film? Um, okay, so June fourteenth through sixteenth, we're having a sneak peek. It's a online. I feel awkward all of a sudden. Why? No, it's so good. No. Go for it. I just don't. There's other parties involved. I don't want to like. I'm with I you. just don't want to like say something yeah. and then like it doesn't happen. Like what's going on? I'm with you. Um, <clears throat> but yeah, there's definitely something percolating. Um, I don't like it when you use that word. <laughs> now let's go. How can we watch <laughs> Holy Ghost three? It's July. 4th. June fourteenth, June fourteenth through sixteenth, we okay. have an online sneak peek. It won't be it, the movie's not going to be released until probably a couple months after that. Okay, but what what we typically do with a lot of these movies, we have these like sneak peeks, so yeah. people can see the movie early and actually get the, the chance to buy the movie early in that early window as well. Okay, otherwise you're gonna have to wait a couple of months. And so this is just a way for people, especially like around the world, to be able to like tune in. Um, you're gonna pay five bucks. It's just like renting a movie. It's it's a cup of coffee. I love it. And you go and you basically like during that kind of 72 hour window, you can, you can watch the film. Okay. Um, you know, it's, it's through WPTV, my, um, my streaming service. So you yeah. just, you can, we, you can watch it on your, on your TV through Apple TV, Roku, all that kind of stuff. But yeah, so that's, that's really the best way uh, for people to do it. It's the only way for people to do it, you know, right now. Unless you torrent. What? Nothing. Oh, uh, pirate Illy. Never mind. Okay. Gosh, this is not going well. Uh, no, or so I can email you the link that you sent me. No, I'm just kidding. Yeah, I'm so not yeah, do let's that. not do that. Um, <laughs> no, so that so that's going to be how people do it. And you just go to, to Holy Ghost three, Holy Ghost three film dot com is what it will be. We're gonna put all the info cool in the description of this video. Gosh, why am I having such a hard time talking with you I don't right know, now? Because you're excited that you had an idea. No, but. I just love you, man. We've been going around the world together for years. You are like, I've always created, the, I've done my best to keep this space friends. Yeah. Uh, and I've also done my best to keep this place as not a place where people come and do pitches. Right. And that's not why I'm having you on. Yeah. But uh, your films have been such a massive part of my life. Hmm. It is with great joy. Hmm. that I can have you on to share this next project. I love you, man. Thank you. I love you, You too. have, ro- like, I hate the term rolling, but we've used it so much. Like, rolling with you for all these years yeah. has been so much fun. I love, I love watching the journey that you've been on. Hmm. And, I, dude, I just love how you've kept it so pure hmm. at, the, at the end of it all. You know, I, I love the way you've handled the criticism. Hmm. 
because, man, you have much thicker skin than I do. <laughs> and I'm, we're living in a world where anything you put out is going to get criticized. Right, right. These things get criticized. But I just, I'm just impressed by you, Darren, Thank and your you. love for the Lord, your obedience for the Lord, your love for your kids. Mm. Uh, I, just, I just love you, man. And the Thank fact you. that you're in Franklin is just sweetens the deal. It's gonna be, it's, yeah, it's going to be fun to finally get together with you in, a th- in three or four months. Yeah, it'll happen. Uh, <laughs> I want you guys to go and watch this film and support my buddy Darren. Share the info. Uh, it's, it's down in the description below. It's, it's uh, honestly, I watched the whole thing last night. I was up till midnight <laughs> watching it. It's almost two hours long. It's great. Mm-hmm. It, it took me back in time. And what I love the most is it was all the stories from my friends yeah. that when they would come back from film, they'd be like, oh, I saw this. I saw this, yeah. but it never made the films. Right. And I got to see him. So I was excited. Like the Reinhardt one, I was so excited. <laughs> I, I just loved that. I loved, I loved it all. And I love you, Darren, man. I love you, too. And, and I will uh, say something, too, about you, because you've been gushing on me. I will say, again, you know, we talked about guys going wonky and this and that. And, like, for me, the hardest thing for the last, no, 16, 17 years of doing this um, has been, who do I trust? That's the hardest part of, to navigate. Because I'm constantly getting pitched. I just got pitched the other day. You know, like, God, God told me you're supposed to make this thing. You know, and it's all my story and blah, blah, blah. It's like... If, if you pitch me something, I'm not going to do it. But so you, I get this stuff all the time. You know, um, people, pastors want to like use the, this medium, you know, to like just, and it's, and you can, it's hard to spot, but it's, you can still kind of, it's more of a feel, right? Yeah. But you are one of the few um, that, that has, openly and very like vocally many times said i do not want anything from you you never have to film me you don't have to use anything we film if you want to film somebody else and i'll just come along and pray and we'll do you know like you've always been that guy that like i know like i can take it to the bank will doesn't want anything and i think that's why like we're such good friends yeah you know because you're one of the few that i can trust and we, we're joking I'm a, I'm a hobbit and i'm very very introverted and People kind of freak me out. but So it's like, it's just funny because I really only need like three or four. Yeah. And that I'm happy as a clam. Three or four that I can just trust and roll with. Yeah. And, like, you know, and, and you're one of them. So mm-hmm. I want to thank you for, Thanks, man. for the purity that you've walked into. Bro, it's been a season, man. We've grown a lot over the 10 years. When I met you, I was living in, or when I heard about, when you reached out, I will never forget the phone call. <laughs> when we talked on the phone, I was living in Moravian Falls, North Carolina. Mm-hmm. My life was falling apart, right? Not like it was just a season. Yeah. It was a season, man. I was selling lawnmowers at Lowe's. And Randy asked me to come back out and move out. And that's when I went and filmed with you. It was in that whole season where I started to get back into it. And, man, I'd never been more nervous to go filming in Thailand. Because, mm-hmm. like, I realized that you were, you guys were dropping like 60 grand or mm-hmm. whatever on like to follow me around. I know you're going to capture some other people, but yeah. you're like, we're going out to film you. Right. And we're going to do these other things as well. But the amount of pressure that I felt mm-hmm. and then navigating performance and then like, mm-hmm. right. Yeah. I'll be honest. Maybe the other, like, I'll be honest. Like I was in my early twenties. No, no. Yes, I was in my mid twenties when we filmed in okay. Thailand. How long ago did Furious we, we, Love come we out? We filmed uh, Furious Love came out in two thousand ten, so we were, that was in two thousand nine. So that's fourteen years ago. Mm-hmm. Yeah, my kids were, my son was two, he's now <laughs> s- seventeen. Huh. You know, no, it, yeah. It, so it was a long time. Yeah, ago. it was a long time ago. And so we're navigating all this stuff. I just because uh, I think you always want to perform. Yeah. In the sense of like, I don't want to let the film crew down. I want God to show up. Right. I, I shouldn't say I always want to perform, but I always wanted to make sure that like we were doing, like we were going for it. And then you had such a grace to be like, it's like chill, like, <laughs> like chill. And I'm like ADD boy, like, <laughs> like running around Thailand, half jet lag, <sighs> you know? And I just have always felt very comfortable around you. Yeah. And, uh, and I love it, man. I, if I were to do it again, there's so many things I do different. I look back, I look back at my early film stuff, 
and I go, man, I was morbidly obese, or man, I was sweaty. Man, I remember you know, sweaty, like, bro, sweaty, sweaty lips. lips. <laughs> I, I'm just like, what was I wearing? I think I got that shirt from my dad. <laughs> <laughs> you know, like, and I just go, man, what that film did, what those doors that it opened up for me were mm. massive. And I still live off of the blessing of being in those films. Mm, that's awesome. <clears throat> Especially Furious Love. That, f- that film changed my life in a lot of mm. ways. And, I, and I, th- I don't know if I've told you this, but it's not like I got a million invitations after it. Yeah. Because, like, uh, you know. At every film, here's what I like. At every film, there was like one or two that were like highlighted, right? Which is awesome. Something crazy, you know, the Dome of the Rock, right? Whatever it was, like Philip Mantofa walking out onto the stage. Like there was yeah. always these highlights. But here's what your film did. Have I ever told you this? I don't know. Tell me. What your film did for me personally was was. It's not like my phone, like rang off the hook. Come and speak in my church because at that time I was itinerating. But what it did for me was create a, a place of safety hmm. for any church that had anybody in the church that had watched it, that had watched your films. It was like, oh, he was in this. Like, it's mm. okay. Like, we've watched him minister. And it allowed me to go around the world hmm. and be like, oh, you were in that film? Come on. Like, it opened up doors, even though it didn't like, right. I wasn't being like rushed. Right. It just gave this, oh, you were in that film, that's awesome. And then now, all these years later, I get to travel around the world and I meet people. Hmm. I think I was, in, I was in California maybe a few years ago and I was at like a, my kid's soccer game or baseball and somebody came running up and they were like, dude, are you the guy from uh, Thailand? <laughs> and I was like, yes. <laughs> and they, they were like... And they just broke down in tears. Like, that movie changed my life. Hmm. <clears throat> and they shared the story. And I, I was like, you got to tell Darren this. I think I called you on the spot. The, the impact that those mov- the movies have had are just, they're mind-boggling. That's awesome. It really, it really are. Yeah, I think um, it's funny. Like, I, I get that intellect- intellectually, but, like, I think the Lord just kind of, like, he's just kind of hidden it from me of, like, how, like, how important they are. You know, like, I just don't quite get it. Like, I hear it all the time, Mm -hmm. but it's just like, and I think part of it, I think part of the reason, because I've thought about this quite a bit, is like, God, why did you, why did you choose me? I think I've written about this. I've I've preached about it. And, you know, part, part of the answer and the main answer is simply because I said yes when he asked me to, um, you know, all those years ago. And then even now, like, I just want to be the guy that when he asked me to do something, he can take it to the bank. I'm going to do it. Um, but I think the other reason m- might is, is, is my personality because I really, really don't want to be famous. I really don't want people's attention on me. I don't like it, you know, and I, I know that. And I don't like I don't like standing ovations. I don't like it. I have. OK, I'll, I'll give you that. This is a little tidbit. You said you wanted tidbits. I knew that. I, I wouldn't say that I thought something was wrong, but I, 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 f- I fully understood how empty success is when, I think you were there, Holy Ghost premiered out in, in Reading. And we I had was the there. Civic Center. Civic like, Center was packed. Sold out twice, yeah. t- you know, twice in a row. And the, like, every, the whole world's watching. We break all the yeah. Bethel TV records. Like, yeah. It's just like, it's just Bananasville, right? Right. And I don't know how many thousands of people that place holds but you know i remember i got up and you know i get this this long standing ovation yeah and you know after the movie and i remember standing there thinking i feel i don't feel a thing yeah like you know this is most people this is what you this is what you're you're especially an artist this is what you want yeah you want people to like love what you've created and love you but i'm like i don't like i don't like this like, this is, you know what I mean? Like, I, I like it. Of course yeah. you like it. But, like, there's nothing here. Like, it's so empty. Yeah. And, you know, that really, I think that that just kind of, like, set, and I really try to, like, make that my baseline of, like, there, like it doesn't matter how, how successful something gets. It's, like, it's just a thing that I did. Mm-hmm. You know? It's not who I am. Yeah. And I think that's where a lot of people get in trouble. It's, like, it's it, what you do is who you are. You know, because in the beginning, I was, I mean, I, I was like the finger of God guy, furious love guy, and I yeah. embraced it. 
Oh yeah. Yeah. That's me. Yeah. Like I made those yeah. movies. Um, and then I almost lost everything. And that's when the Lord kind of broke that off of me. You know, I don't know if I ever told you that story. I don't know if we have to wrap up or anything. No, but, we're good. We're good. But it was, um, I think I was, I was, we were in the middle of filming father of lights. And basically we, we realized that we we're running out of money as a company. And I was like, I think we're going to go bankrupt. Like I, I'm not going to finish this movie, like blah, blah, blah. And, and it was, you know, because I like, I just, I didn't know how to run a business, you know? And I'm just like hiring my hiring people. And like, let's just, let's keep just pouring money into this new movie. And I just didn't know what I was doing. And it looked like there's a, there's a, about a three day period where I went into a deep, deep, deep depression <laughs> because my identity was being right. about to be destroyed. Right. And I went to church. I used to attend, attended a church at the time that met at night. I went to church and, you know, during worship, I was just sitting in my chair crying. I was just like, God, I like what I'm doing. I'm trying to do this for you. You know, like you know, all the kind of the things that you throw at him when you're, when you're in that state. And he asked me a question and he said, what will you do if I burn it all down? No. What, what will you do if it burns to the ground? Like what's the worst that mm. can happen? And he kind of gave me, he, and he opened my eyes for the first time because I was living in stress, just living in it, right? Every day, it's just a stressful day. And I'm also a full-time college professor at the time, too. Like, everything is just, like, just caving in. And he showed me what it would look like. I'd go back to being a teacher, which I love to do. Right. Uh, you know, I'd have my summers off, no more stress, no more this, no more that. I've, I've got two films that have, you know, helped move the temperature a little bit. And I was like, it actually, it, that actually would, wouldn't, it doesn't sound that bad, you know? And it just, I remember he just ministered to me that night. It was just me sitting in a chair, everybody was worshiping around me, and he just broke it. He just broke it. Wow. He broke that thing of like, this is not who you are, this is what you do. Yeah. You know? And like, at the end of the day, like, you're with me. Yeah. You know? And so that really changed the whole, everything for me. And so from that day, it's like, this isn't, this is not who I am. Yeah. You know? And... Um, I've never really struggled with, with that that kind of stuff. It doesn't. It's nice when people say they love your movies, but okay, yeah. cool. I love I love the coffee that this coffee shop makes. That's great. You know, right. like right. anyway, that's probably where that kind of comes from. A long that. answer to probably a it is short beautiful. question. I love you, Darren. But I love you too, buddy. I love you, massive man. <laughs> We've done vacations together. Mm -hmm. uh, I, I love you, man. Yeah, I just love you, dude. Thank you. You and my wife are very similar. I remember that from vacation. <laughs> you just wanted to sit and read. <laughs> like, nerds, I want to go on an adventure. Listen, uh, Darren, Yeah. Um, what's your website again? WP Films? WPFilms.com. Uh, mm -hmm. um, and then, yeah, so this will probably be, you can access this, the Holy Ghost 3 there as well. But okay. the, the specific one for Holy Ghost 3 is HolyGhost3Film.com. Okay. And then what's your social? At Wander Darren, pretty much everywhere. At Wander Darren. Wander Darren, D A R R E N. Okay. And, uh, dude, thanks for coming in. Thanks for having me. This is fun. I love this, man. If you could get the air conditioning working next time, it's going to happen. It'd be nice. Don't worry, man. And open up that pool you had up there, too. Dude, that thing's been closed for, I think, s four years. Really? Yeah. Funny, funny thing about the pool. <laughs> <laughs> I dropped like koi in there. Okay, so. In First the of all, yeah. swimming pool? Oh, yeah, they're in there. So, <laughs> Were they dead? No, 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 they're alive. They're it's alive. covered, though. Don't they need to, like... No, they, they're, like, they're fine. Don't worry about it. Simmer all down right. there, cowboy. You're going to get uh, haters. No, no, I won't. I, I studied aquaculture for years. Okay, I know <laughs> what I'm doing. I've dropped some koi in there. Because, like, we only thought we'd be here for, like, six months. Yeah. And so my thing was, like, somebody will, like, go to clean out the pool. Because it had been sitting there covered. There's no chlorine in it. It's just That's funny. fresh water. So I dropped some koi in. And I just was like imagining in my brain, like somebody being like, let's get this pool ready. And there's just like three foot long koi in there. Um, and th they're still in there. I feed them. Are you they're yeah, they're doing fine. That's awesome. Yeah, they're doing fine. I don't, what are we talking about? I'll get the pool open. You, you bring your bathing suit and let's go. Okay. Uh, listen, thanks for watching, guys. Uh, <laughs> oh, I have one more question. Uh oh. Uh, there's a certain man off camera. That has been traveling with you. Yes. His name's James. Yes. He's one of the guys behind this. 
He was in, uh, in Honduras. Yeah, on a scale right. from 1 to 10, how awful is he? No, I'm just kidding. As a person? <laughs> I'm just kidding. Or? James, James, uh, just whatever. You know, it doesn't matter. Whatever metric you decide. He is an amazing dude. He is. He, he is. killed it. He For somebody who came in and had never worked with me before, ever, yeah. it was like kind of a, were you like a last, like, kind of something, yeah. something like a last minute kind of fill in, right? And he, he came in and crushed it. So it was, it He's was great. He's incredible. Yeah. Uh, you have to watch Nefento, which I doubt you will, because you don't watch anything I tell you to watch. But those who are listening to this can watch Nefento, okay? Just send it to me. Do I Dude, have you've it? actually seen Actually, you've seen it. I think you have. It's our story on the war in I've Mozambique. I've seen the trailer. Yeah. I don't think I've seen the movie. Well, you should. Uh, and then they just released a video on our Nepal base. It's incredible. Hmm. They, like, James and his wife are just the most amazing storytellers. And they're like, their lenses are just... Everything they do is spectacular. Oh That's awesome. Yeah. I've always wanted to film in Nepal. You should. Dude, our base in Nepal. You got to watch the film. It's incredible. Right, I will. I, d- I don't believe you. James, send it to me. I'll it's really good. It's like I 30, will, I 30 promise minutes. I you I'll watch that. It's really, really, you really my good. Word, our base it. in Nepal is 10 out of 10. And you guys can all watch it by going on to the YouTube channel. It's like a few videos back, but just you're oh, good. Oh, it's, on, YouTube? it's it. on your YouTube channel? Yeah, man. Oh, we okay. give I'll, stuff I'll away. Go there, We're free. We don't charge people. You're I'm just kidding. I'm joking, dude. I love it. I absolutely love it. And buying, sewing into what you're doing is incredibly, incredibly important. So don't pirate it. <laughs> but uh, honestly, like the stuff, the work you do is incredible, man. I love you, you, bud. It's been fun filming this today. Guys, like, subscribe, uh, and do all the things that you're supposed to do. And uh, ring a bell. Do they have bells? You have a bell. Uh, ring a bell and uh, hit, hit the things. We'll see you in the next uh, episode of the Iris Global Green Room. <laughs> I get, I blew my kiss. <laughs>